the court. There we go. All right, so it is 1230, so we are going to get started. Uh, today is part two of our four-part Lunch and Learn series. Uh, last week, or two weeks ago, I should say, we talked about genetic genealogy, which is available on, on the Archives YouTube if you're interested in watching it or missed it. And uh, the next two upcoming after today will be online resources, so resources you can use to do genealogical or local history research from home. And uh, the other one will be property research, which is one of our uh, more popular questions as of late. So stay tuned for that. However, today we will be talking about understanding the archives. And uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the archives as a whole and talk about Lambton County. So my name is Nicole Zolest. I am the archivist supervisor of the Lambton County Archives, which is located in Wyoming, Ontario been here for about four years, almost, give or take. So I've been here for uh, a little bit now, and I'm very excited to share with you today about, you know, who we are, what we do, and uh, what I enjoy to do here. So we're going to start off with what is in archives, um, talk about us, like I said, and also I'm going to show you some collection examples and how we can do research within the collection. All but one image I'm using today uh, is from our collection here at the archives. So if you have any questions about um, anything that we have or anything that you see in the presentation, feel free to drop it in the chat or in the Q&A and I'll be sure to leave time at the end of the session to go over any questions that uh, you may have. So, have you ever wondered who used to live in your house or what the original price was? Are you interested in researching the works of a writer, an artist, or maybe a photographer? Have you always wanted to research your family's history? Well, an archives holds the answer to these and many other questions. So an archives works to acquire, preserve, and make available material collected under the terms of a particular mandate, whether that be the document of a community or business, um, that to reflect government policies and a whole abundance of other reasons. Archival evidence is based around the concept of a record. Collecting records makes an archives different from a library as they typically collect published items like books or also a museum which collects artifacts like medals, statues or, or other various typically three-dimensional objects. Uh, there's many types of archives serving a variety of purposes, and this includes business archives, cultural archives, national, uh, provincial, municipal archives, medical archives, community archives, religious, university, college archives. There's a whole abundance of a whole variety of different archives, and they all contain different kinds of records. Uh, this can be diaries, journals, meeting minutes, bylaws, administrative records, legal records, financial records, sound and video recordings, movies, uh, maps, correspondence, photos, architectural plans, uh, technical drawings, you name it. A lot of this material will be preserved in archives. And so the archives in general ensures that the records of today are preserved for future generations and that people can use these records to study and understand the life, ideas and thoughts of their original creators, which helps in linking the past, the present and the future. So whether or not you may realize it, you probably also have an archives in your home. It might be a filing cabinet in your study, box in the basement, chest in the attic, this is a personal archives, a collection of material that and records that are important events in your family's histories. So think about your photo albums. I know photos are going more digital now, but I'm sure a lot of us still have the older photo albums with the lovely clingy static cling uh, covers and there's possibly home new movies, uh, certificates of accomplishment, old report cards, all of those types of things that we collect, even I have stuff from when I was in school, um, that is your personal archives. So there's a whole 
archives in your home potentially as well. Now me, I am an archivist and archivists are specially trained in preserving the original material and helping to also provide access to it. So we often work with paper documents, photos, maps, films, and computer records. And I did find a quote that said many um, archivists begin their career as historians. I didn't really go that route. I began my career um, as an archeologist and a museum curator. And I was actually a curator at an archeology span museum. So the best of both worlds in one. And that was where I really began my interest and my passion in archives because with a lot of artifacts that you come across, there's often double the amount of paperwork to go with it to keep that story, maintain that story and, and the meaning of, of this material. And I really, really enjoyed that. And I loved connecting everything together to get that bigger story and preserve that bigger story and share it. So what really drives me is the preservation of material, making that material accessible to the public and also being accountable for that material. So a lot of material that comes to archives is typically donated. And I wanna be accountable for the material that's donated so that if you donate your material to us, you know that we are going to do our best to make sure that we are always maintaining it, knowing where it is and, and keeping everything organized. So the Lambton County Archives, LCA, uh, is a center for archival material related to the history and families of Lambton County. Uh, we preserve the collection, make it accessible, and assist the public with local history and genealogical research inquiries. So we often work with anyone just starting out in genealogy to people who have been gene doing genealogy and local history research for decades. We work with everyone and we provide access to archival material. And we're very local in our scope and focus. So we try to keep everything to our mandate, which is Lambton County. However, we do have some material from Huron, Middlesex, and even some from Port Huron in Michigan, uh, because you do see a lot of the families, especially in um, closer to the edges of Lambton County, you'll see a lot of families in Huron and Middlesex and Kent and, and surrounding vicinity. So we do try to keep very basic, very limited amounts of that material just to like cemetery information and things like that, um, just to kind of help fill in some of the gaps that um, relate to Lambton families as well. So we also have a wonderful vault and this is a purpose-built space designed to safely house the material. So there is a temperature and humidity control specifically for that room. It keeps it at an optimal condition for the collection. Uh, so items, and it's also a key card access, so they're secured and carefully monitored. We always monitor for various types of deterioration, such as, you know, if a rodent gets in or if there's any um, indications of, say, mold or uh, negatives with vinegar syndrome or anything else, we do monitor the collections and we make sure to mitigate any potential issues that arise and also do some preventative conservation to hopefully stop the issues that could arise before they do arise. And I will note that everything that's in the vault, all of our files and books, so our reference collection or books can actually be accessed. Um, you can see the holdings that we have here through the Lambton County Library catalog, so on their website. So you can see, you know, what say family history books we may have that's been cataloged or local history books that have been cataloged. You can't take it out like a library book, but at least you can see it's here and potentially a local library that has that material as well. And in the files, we have a file, all of our files cataloged in a digital database so that we can easily search and locate files for researchers when they come in interested looking for say, um, oil history or international drillers or family histories, anything um, we can typically search through our digital collection. So as I mentioned, it's all 
cataloged so we know where everything is at any given point in time. This is the only photo that I use in this presentation that is not material from our collection, uh, just to let you know. But our collection, we, we do have over 20,000 files of materials and we organize them with a number which says the type of history it is. For example, anything that's with a four is a family history, eight is education, nine is local history, so on and so forth. And then with the exception of family histories, we give everything a letter that tells us the locale that it's from. So um, for example, nine being uh, local history, we'll put a JA beside it if it's Sarnia or ED if it's Petrolia. And then we do dash in another net letter to say what it is within that. Is it a club and organization? Is it sports? Is it um, church history? Whichever it is, we try to keep it consistent so that all of the documents, all of the photos, all of the maps, everything's standardized and cataloged in a similar way so that we can cross-reference everything a lot easier as well. And I just did a list here of some of the types of records that, uh, that we have at our archives here. So to get a bit more specific, we do have a listing of newspapers. So you can actually find the list of our microfilm newspaper holdings on our website underneath the LCA blog, research resources or researching resources. And uh, these materials are available in the reading room. And uh, we do have the majority of Lambton County newspapers on microfilm. However, we are missing some issues. So we do keep an eye out for, especially those early ones that um, haven't really stood the test of, of time. So we are constantly kind of adding and digitizing and trying to keep everything as current as we possibly can. Maps and aerial photographs, a very neat collection. So uh, you can actually see some of our aerial photographs from the Douglas Paisley collection on the online catalog available through our website. A lot of the aerials that we do have in that collections from Sarnia and area, uh, but here we did focus a couple of other ones that we have in the collection, which include Wyoming uh, in the 1950s. And then we do have maps of specific areas in Lambton County, fire insurance maps, which are really, really quite neat, great for local history and property research. And uh, we do have some drainage maps and things like that as well. The Tweedsmere histories, I'll spend a little bit of time on this. These are very, very significant books for those of you who uh, may not know what they are. So Tweets from Your Histories, this idea began in the 1920s and in 1925, a committee for the historical research and current events uh, in the Women's Institute, so these are Women's Institute books, formed and suggested, so this committee suggested that more time be dedicated to the study of local history. So by the mid-1930s, uh, Lady Tweedsmere, who was the wife of Lord Tweedsmere, the Governor General of Canada, took a great interest in women's institutes in Canada. And while at a meeting um, at, of the Athens Women's Institute, Lady Tweedsmere stressed the need for preserving history of our communities. As an active member in England, she suggested that Ontario Women Institute branches follow the example of their English counterparts and keep detailed local history books. She encouraged Women Institute branches to preserve community history in response to the rapidly changing and urbanization of landscape. So documenting history was seen as a fitting project to mark the upcoming uh, 50th anniversary of the Women's Institute movement. Thus a campaign was launched in 1945, encouraging every Women's Institute branch in Ontario to prepare a history of their local community. And this proved to be very popular. And the, these local histories were officially named the Tweetsmere Books in 1947. So by 1964, all levels of the Women's Institute organization had begun to take Tweetsmere Books very, very, very seriously with well over 1,100 branch histories recorded. And uh, there was workshops and all of these things also introduced to coincide with the Tweedsmere histories as well. So now they're, to, as of today, they're officially called Tweedsmere Community History Books, and th those who created it are called coordinators. 
So they do still continue to be compiled by all levels of the Women's Institute. And while many of these can still be found in homes of the coordinators, you can also find quite a few in archives, libraries, museums, and other locations. Uh, there also have been quite a few of these that have been digitized and they're publicly available through uh, the virtual archives of the Federated Women's Institutes of Ontario. So in these books, you'll find the history of the local branch, maybe information on some of the early settlers in the area, agricultural practices, family histories, industry, uh, public buildings such as churches, schools, and community centers, information about other local people, and just, just so much more. And family files. Uh, so this is a big part of our collection and they're devoted to the surnames of individuals who primarily have lived in Lambton County. And they can be, so here I have uh, Sadie Knowles, who was a children's librarian in Sarnia. For those of you who are from Sarnia, you may, may or may not remember her. Um, a very, very wonderful person from what I was told and very passionate about um, children's interest in reading and, and making sure that children were reading good books. So this is an example of a photo of Sadie uh, from the collection, as well as a great biography that was in her family file detailing her impact in children's libraries in Canada, like across Canada, as well as her interest in art and her her time as part of the Women's Art Conservation Association in Sarnia, which brought a lot of art to Sarnia, especially in the 1920s. In these collections, you'll often find diaries and letters, and these are great firsthand accounts of Lambton County throughout time. So I pulled an example from Henry Jones Jr.'s diary. Uh, he talked about the environment of Lambton County in 1830, and he talked about, as I'm sure we're all feeling right now with mosquitoes now in full action already at the end of May, um, he notes that there's certainly a problem in 1830 as well, but um, some instances cultivation tends to diminish the numbers as every settler with pleasure discovers in the case of mosquitoes. So he was an early land agent. And for those of you who have heard about Maxwell and the Maxwell settlement, uh, which is now the Brights Grove area, he was the son of Henry Jones Sr., who was the founder of uh, the Maxwell settlement. Uh, we do have a lot of war related materials as well. We have a few war diaries, photos, um, letters, biographies, that type of material. There's also two books on our website that talk about uh, Lambton County and war. So highly recommend those. Government records, we are a county archive. So we do have a lot of government records as well. This can include uh, bylaws, minutes, correspondence, early financial reports, taxes, things like that from the 1800s of various townships as well as the county. A lot of business, the local history records. These are really, really quite neat. So I chose a photo of the Vendome Hotel in Sarnia. This is, um, this hotel was around in the, well, it's around for quite a while actually, uh, but we do have the hotel registers from the 1800s that show who was staying the night there. So I thought that would be a really cool photo to include. But other records that we have are histories, advertising, uh, correspondence, different ledgers. So especially for say a general store, hardware store, um, inventories, items that were purchased, sold, things like that, as well as other memorabilia of the store. So thinking about um, what a lot of us don't save, but actually uh, receipts from purchases and invoices and things like that. We do collect those for a lot of the old businesses here because you can actually get uh, the logos of the business, which is really interesting to see, especially as they um, transition over time. So a business might change names, might amalgamate with another business, and you, you see that transition in the business logos, which you often find on invoices and other materials like that. 
postcards, another big part of many archives collections. So it's a great look back. I picked more landscape based postcards for here, but you also have real photo postcards as well that are uh, families or friends and, and really feature the people. Not all of the postcards have writing on the back, but quite a few do and you get the beautiful postmark on them as well. And then of course, photographs. So photographs dating back to about the 1870s. I have done a workshop for the Heritage Museum if you're interested in learning more about preserving your photographs and learning more about the different types of photographs. I highly recommend checking out uh, Lambton Heritage Museum's YouTube page and you can learn a little bit more of the types of photographs that we have in the collection and we have in our archives at home as well as many of us do. And you can see, you know, there might be old carte de visite, old tin types, maybe glass photos, glass negatives, um, a whole like little snapshot photographs, a whole wide array of materials that we have and they're all preserved differently. Uh, so it's always fun to see what's, what's hidden kind of in the collections just waiting to be once again uncovered. And another smaller, well, not smaller part, but another part of our collection is the Sarnia Observer Negatives. You can access most of these online through our online catalog. I chose these two because it's of skits in Sarnia, 1954. On the left, you see the machine shop, actually. That was a uh, machine shop class in 54. And on the right was the cadet corpse, which was during their annual church parades, also in 1954, that same year. Uh, drainage, another big part of the collection. So as early as 1835, you see Upper Canada passing early drainage legislations. And then as interest in drainage increased, typically with urbanization, the effectiveness of these legislations also increased. So by 1858, uh, the County Agricultural Society notes that local farmers really had a lot of success with their crops raised on artificially drained lands that year, especially during the wet season. So township councils made drainage expenditures part of their annual budgets and through the construction of road allowance ditches and stream improvements. But by 19, or 1868, sorry, a problem was noted that some of the ditches hastened the ruins of roads due to the volume of drainage running through them. So you do see a lot of um, especially drainage bylaws in the collection too, because they're often handed out to the local farmers and people whose land were impacted by it. And you will see a lot of the expenditures and where the drainage was at the time. So why are we important? Well, an archives have value, and I pulled this from the National Archives in the UK. Archives have value to nations and regions, organizations, communities, and individual people. They provide evidence of activities which occurred in the past. They tell stories document people and identity and are valuable resources of information for research. They are our recorded memory and form an important part of our community, cultural, official, and unofficial history. Nice little summary there. And that's it. So a nice quick little introductory uh, presentation. I do have a longer version of this as well as our uh, property presentations coming up if you're from Lambton in the local libraries. So next week I have um, two property workshops on in one in Forest, one in Petrolia, and I also have the longer version of this presentation uh, in, Sarnia, in Sarnia next week as well. So if you're interested in learning more and actually coming in person, uh, we're, we're back into the world of coming in person, um, check out the library website and you can certainly register for one of those events. I don't see any questions. I'll leave a couple more minutes for questions. And, uh, oh, look at that. So newspapers. So currently Lambton County, we don't have many of the newspapers online. Uh, you'd have to actually come in person to the archives to view them on microfilm. Um, Sarnia Library does have microfilm as well, the Sarnia Observer, and I have found some of the early Petrolia topics and Windsor Guide Advocate, or sorry, Windsor Guide, Watford Guide Advocates available through, 
I think it's Canadiana. So you'll find a few of those on there. And Lambton Library, if you have a library card, you can also access historical newspapers. So the Windsor Star, Toronto Star and Globe and Mail uh, through the libraries. And I will note that especially the Windsor Star did cover a lot of Lambton County. So it's a fantastic resource for local history research. And the reading room, the other question, where is the reading room located? So the reading room is located here in the archives in Wyoming, uh, which is the address on this last page here. So we do recommend if you wanna come and visit and view the newspapers or use um, one of our computers, we do recommend an appointment. It's not required, uh, but at least we can have something reserved for you and make sure that's available for the duration of your time here. I hope that answered your question. Oh, good. <laughs> um, any other questions? Another few minutes. This is a fun presentation. I haven't done this presentation in a while, so this is a lot of fun. It's nice to get back and get doing a lot of this stuff again. All right. Well, it's fairly quiet, so I just want to say Thank you everybody for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for upcoming events and uh, I look forward to sharing more, more workshops and events with you in the coming future. All right. And with that, I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. <laughs>